So, Ms. Lodi, you've been traveling around the world from the U.S. to Canada to Europe talking to OFWs. What is on top of their list? Well, on top of their list is uh, who would be the best president to be um, the Philippine head for the next six years. And so I, I'm coming around so that they will be informed that President Noy Noy has done a lot in just five years. He has improved the infrastructure. He has improved the collection of income taxes. He has been able to give salary, or not salary, but uh, direct money to the very, very poor. And so I want the uh, overseas vo uh, Filipino workers which are of two kinds, the migrants and those who are citizens of the country. how about them? What are they telling you to be their main concern? What, are the, what is it that they want well, to happen? Again, there are two things, okay? Those who are already there are, are uh, need to hear that the Philippines has become investment grade, those who are already citizens of foreign country. Because even if you take us out of the country, the country remains with us. So they have to know that the um, infrastructure has been improved 750 billion has been spent that going to Baguio now takes four to five hours rather than seven. Those are the, th those are the things, not their concern, but they want to know is, is, has the Philippines moved out of being the most corrupt nation to but being now you know, All of the nation. presidential candidates during the latest presidential debate focused on making the economy stronger so that all these OFWs can come back, that they have jobs when they come back. But the question is, are the OFWs ready to come back? Well, again, those who are contract workers, all right, when their contract ends, they have to come back. So when they come back here, it's, ba it's based on whether they have the wherewithal, they have some money that has been saved, or back to zero. So those are the concerns. And for this administration and for my candidate, you know, Rojas Robredo, their goal is to develop, continue the development of our economy because now the, our GDP has moved up. But the specific issues affecting OVWs, you have the laglag bala, you have the balik bayan boxes. Those were issues that happened in this administration. So those are big concerns for the OFWs. Yes, that's true. They are worried about that. And there has been four people who has been arrested and con not yet convicted, arrested. And there are ongoing investigation. Unfortunately, it is not complete yet. And so the, they, the uh, overseas, uh, the OFWs, are, they have a, a, a uh, real concern that when they come, you know, they might be laglagbala also. Now you have uh, the registered voters for overseas office has spurred up to more than a million, breached the one million point. However, voter turnout for the past several elections have been dwindling. What can we do to encourage our OFW brothers and sisters to vote in this election? Well, part of the reason I went around is to encourage community leaders to reach out and bring them here. Unfortunately, some of the foreign posts are very slow in sending their uh, ballots. They have to be mailed. They're, you know, it's now almost uh, two weeks more into the election abroad. And but they is have it maybe not, because mm -hmm. our OFWs do not feel the government, do not feel the presence of the government, that's why they don't really see the need to participate in the elections? Well, I think that's part of it, but basically lack of information. They didn't even know that voting has started on April 9. But for those who know, you know, there is a great interest on listening what is the truth about the Philippines. And that's why I went around telling them in, in just the six years of President Aquino, the Philippines has become investment grade for the first time in our life. For the first time in the Philippine uh, tourism, it's now five million visitors but one thing that they that they would be concerned with would be poverty because poverty incident is still it's still very high and for them the need to go abroad is really because they want to uplift the situation of the families here in the country and if their families don't feel that i guess that's something that they'll also be very concerned with well that's why i'm telling them that because of our increase in revenue four million four hundred thousand have received cc and uh, uh four piece meaning to say they wreck money transfer to their pocket. So many of the people abroad, Filipinos overseas, do not know that there is a sharing of wealth of the country. But kulang pa, four million is, is good, but we have another 10 million families that need to be helped directly. I'm sorry, just very quickly, you also filed a petition with the Supreme Court questioning the ban by the Comelec to campaign during this time that, the, that they can vote for that one month. What is the status of that now? The status of that is that we have a temporary restraining order from the Supreme Court to tell Comelec, forget it, 
they can campaign and all the way until May 7 and 8, or May 8 and 9, but, okay, just not in the consulate, but, uh, uh, you know, outside, you know, who are you to say you know, no more freedom of speech, no more um, freedom of assembly? So they gave a ban to Comelec. Because so let's hope that in these elections, with a record high number of registered voters, they will go to the polls and they will vote. They have a month. Thank you very much, Ms. Lloyd, for joining us today. Thank you, Jean. Thank you.